Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and I came across a news story and when I did a little bit of further digging, I found that this news story wasn't just isolated to one news station. I found at least seven different versions of it floating all over the internet from uh, with the last week. And uh, it's about a pair of psychologists saying that medical doctors who are telling their patients to lose weight are guilty of fat shaming and microaggression. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing. Work on skilling up my crafting a little bit and let's talk about this. This is uh, absolute insanity. You know what? I'm, I'm going to read some of this out uh, just from one of these articles <laughs> I came across. All right, and here's what one of the psychologists is saying. Doctors who advise patients to lose weight could be harming them both mentally and physically. I uh, claim two psychologists who stated that the obese experience microaggressions when they're treated at the doctor's office. You know what? Have you guys ever met anyone who uses the term microaggression to you didn't want to just punch in the face? I haven't. Uh, just anyone who even uses that term, you already know you are dealing with someone who you're not going to be able to stand. Um, just me personally. All right. Right down here, Chrysler, it's the one who said that, was joined by a fellow psychologist who argued that it was possible to be healthy at every size. And that being fat led to false assumptions that a person is unhealthy with no understanding of an obese person's genetics, diet, stress levels, and socioeconomic status. Uh, disrespectful treatment and medical fat shaming is an attempt to motivate people to change your behavior. It's stressful and can cause patients to delay health care seeking or avoid interaction with providers, said Professor Chrysler, uh, whose symposium was titled Weapons of Mass Distraction confronting sizeism. All right, guys, this is what we're dealing with. This is back to this uh, health at every size. And the reality of it is, it isn't possible to be healthy at every size. All right, that is a total myth being created by this whole absurd social justice movement that has embraced obesity as if it is some sort of minority group. Uh, it's caused completely by lifestyle. We might as well tr uh, treat Heroin addicts is a minority group, uh, a <laughs> discriminated against group. You might as well treat pedophiles as that. People are saying, wow, you can't believe you're comparing them to that. Well, it isn't that bad. It, it isn't as bad, obviously, because pedophiles hurt other people. Um, drug addicts, their addiction can cause them to hurt other people. But the fact of the matter is, obesity is 100% caused by your lifestyle choices. Now, they could be ignorant in nature, meaning there are plenty of people who uh, get hooked on heroin or get hooked on drugs who don't understand fully the consequences of it when they start. Okay, there is, it can be a degree of ignorance. There are people out there who maybe didn't realize it was going to be that bad, because if they did, they obviously wouldn't have tried it uh, for the majority, I would think. You know, and that's the other thing, too. A lot of people might be on something else and already under the influence of something else that clouds their judgment when they try some of these harder drugs. So they are sometimes a choice made in ignorance. Obesity can be the same way. If you come from a, a family or a household that's ignorant and hasn't been taught basic nutrition, doesn't exercise, uh, they're all obese, okay, it's very easy for you to become obese. But it's still your lifestyle that causes it. And that's the ironic part is that they stood right there and they mentioned stuff like socioeconomic class. So they want to bring this whole virtue signaling thing in uh, that this is discriminating against the poor. Well, the reality is the obesity epidemic discriminates against the poor. Why? Because poor people oftentimes are less educated. Lack of health and fitness education is the leading contributor to obesity because people just aren't taught the basics of this stuff. You combine that with an apathetic attitude, uh, that's how it happens. Uh, there are obviously other factors involved. Uh, for a lot of people, obesity and overeating can be a sign of other uh, issues. It can be a sign of various mental health crises uh, because eating disordered, food addiction, things like that do oftentimes start as a result of trauma in your life. And yeah, that is true. That is absolutely a factor. But people have the ability to turn this around, all right? People have the ability to say, I'm going to stop eating junk food. I'm going to eat more vegetables. I'm going to eat more fiber. I'm going to eat less fat, and I'm going to go walk every day. And that's the reality of it. And you have these experts who are saying that discriminating against people like that, that this, this, it's a form of discrimination. It really isn't. It really isn't. 
And that here's the thing. You've got psychologists who are standing here trying to say that, that you can be healthy at any size when the medical community knows that probably 50% of the health problems we have in Western countries is a direct result of obesity. It's a direct result. How about type 2 diabetes? Almost every person who becomes type 2 diabetic is obese or morbidly obese. Actually, they're morbidly obese, the overwhelming majority. It's the leading cause. Uh, what kills most people in the United States? What's the highest cause of death? It's not murder. It's not car accidents. It's not even street drugs. It's heart attack. Obesity has a direct, strong, causative effect on cardiovascular disease. In other words, someone who is morbidly obese is dramatically, and I don't just mean twice as likely, there's something like, I would need to pull the numbers, it's something like over five times more likely to have a heart attack. Uh, in some cases, it might even be uh, higher than that, depending on various genetics. Obesity, people who are obese get cancer at higher rates. Obesity, actually, there is a causative effect with cancer. And a lot of it has to do with the metabolic syndrome that goes hand in hand uh, with obesity, affecting your insulin sensitivity. When insulin, you become insulin insensitive, your body has to overproduce insulin for it to do anything. Cancer cells are very insulinogenic. So people who overproduce insulin as a response to food, they feed their cancer cells easier. So all these diseases that we deal with, what do we think of as the biggest diseases in our society, the most dangerous stuff that the most healthcare is dedicated to fighting? Cardiovascular disease of all types, that's a big one. Cancer, diabetes. Obese people get every single one of these diseases at many times higher the rate that non-obese people do. All right, this isn't subject to debate. It's extremely obvious. It's so extremely well documented in the literature that it's not even debated anymore. And being obese is, in and of itself, a health issue. A person who is morbidly obese might have okay blood work right now, but if they stay there long enough, five years, eight years, whatever it happens to be, eventually they will develop one or more of these deadly diseases. They absolutely will, with almost no exceptions. You take a person who's morbidly obese, morbidly obese and sedentary, or even if they exercise a little bit, but they maintain a level of morbid obesity due to pure body fat, longer than a decade, and almost every single one of them develops some form of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, or cancer. Almost every single one of them. You might find a rare exception who makes it past a decade without getting one of these, but they're the exception to the rule, and they are very, very rare. People's individual genetics only blunt the effects of this. It might delay the effects. It might determine how severe your first heart attack is going to be. But people who maintain levels of morbid obesity for prolonged numbers of years will almost always, with very very few exceptions develop major health problems as a direct result of it. Uh, so again, this is these psychologists and other people jumping up, making a big deal, taking this social justice nonsense and this virtue signaling to the point of utter stupidity. Of utter stupidity, and that's the thing. Uh, people who are morbidly obese who don't want to go to their doctor because their doctor might tell them well, you need to lose weight. We need to rethink the situation here. Why are you telling them it's okay to be overweight and to not go see their doctor? That's the problem. This fat acceptance movement is telling them that it's okay. When it's not okay, it's going to kill them. Uh, these are people who clearly don't respect themselves. They don't love themselves uh, in many cases. And yeah, they might be embarrassed or upset that their doctor tells them that, but the doctor is saving their life. Because at a certain point, every one of them chose to say, well, my doctor said if I don't uh, fix this problem, I don't start walking every day or eat, eat a salad every day. I'm going to die from this. I'm going to ignore my doctor. Yeah, see, that's bullshit. That's complete bullshit. And the person's like, I'm going to ignore my doctor and never go <laughs> see a doctor again because they're going to tell me this. Well, that's just willfully committing suicide. And here's the problem. If we didn't act like this was some sort of discrimination against people and we genuinely educated people on this from a young age, uh, it would help a, a little bit. It would help a lot. In fact, 
uh, that is something that many people have noticed. They can talk all day long about some of the bullying around it being a problem, but you know what? Uh, the majority of people who I've known through my life who have been morbidly obese and lost weight, I've been there myself, uh, actually ridicule from others was a very large motivating factor. It was a very large motivating factor. and People can say, well, it just caused me to eat more. No, you were already obese before anyone made fun of you for it. Uh, the people who get sick of being made fun of or who are legitimately embarrassed by it, they're more likely to do something about it. And the alternative is to just die then. And that's essentially what they, these psychologists are saying, particularly when you say, well, you don't know their socioeconomic status. Well, people with a poor socioeconomic status are more likely to die of various diseases. So you're not <laughs> making it better by saying, oh, well, they might just be fat because they're poor. Socioeconomic status is associated with higher risk of mortality, so it doesn't mean that they're, they might be healthy, they're just fat because they're poor. Well, they're probably fat because they're poor and ignorant then, in which case they are going to have a higher death rate. They need to focus even more on losing weight and getting healthier in that case, not the opposite. Uh, and the same thing, we're talking about their diet, their genetics, everything else. Well, yeah, their diet matters. Making assumptions about their diet, no shit. They eat a calorie surplus consistently. That is the only dietary practice, scientifically speaking, that causes morbid obesity. Eating more calories than you burn consistently every day, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. That is how you get there, by eating too much food. Every scientist knows this. All the available scientific literature confirms this. The metabolic ward confirms this over and over and over. It's not their thyroid. It's not their metabolism. It is the fact that they eat too much and don't move enough. The scientific evidence for this is overwhelming. In fact, you, you want to know the difference here? We cloud this. We make these big sweeping statements so that people can feel better about their piss poor lifestyles. That's exactly what this is. Oh, it's it's uh my hormones, it's my genetics, it's my, my thyroid causes me to be a hundred pounds overweight. No, it doesn't. And you know the funny thing is, go ask any child, any child who hasn't been indoctrinated in this crazy excuse social justice nonsense, ask any little child who watches people and they see the behavior of fat people versus thin people. Almost always what does a child say if you ask him, hey what causes people to be fat? Every child knows this just from observing because they haven't been indoctrinated in what's polite to say. They'll tell you they eat too much. They get fat because they eat too much. Children know it. All the researchers know it. it. Seems to be everyone else who wants to play this other game. They're the ones who don't know it. And these psychologists are contributing to the problem. As far as I'm concerned, these psychologists trying to say this are promoting death. And anyone saying, hey, you can be healthy at any size, is promoting death. They are killing people. Blot out. Alright guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.